This curve is the most common way to graph the sine function. But we could visualize sine a different way, like with this animation. And if we zoom in, it becomes even more interesting. So what is this animation? In order to explain this, we should first talk about the typical sine wave. Even just graphing this is tricky. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, and sine of pi is 0. But what is sine of 1? It's not a simple question. To calculate it, we can rewrite sine using its Maclaurin series, an infinite polynomial. So sine of 1 is 1, minus 1 to the third over 3 factorial, plus 1 to the fifth over 5 factorial, and as we add more terms, we get closer and closer to sine of 1, approximately 0.84147. And we can use this Maclaurin series to graph sine. We'll start with just x, then add the third power term, then the fifth power term, and continue until we get that sine wave. We can also use the Maclaurin series with complex numbers. The sine of i is i minus i to the third over 3 factorial, and so on. It's about 1.1752i. Let's visualize this process on the complex plane. We start with the first term at i, then move slightly up as more terms are added until we reach 1.1752i. The sine of negative i is the reverse. We start at negative i and move down until we land on negative 1.1752i. We could also do this for the square root of i. And we can plot more than one point at a time. Let's watch these eight. We could even plot this whole circle. So here at the end, we have a graph of the sine of the complex circle with radius 1. Let's change the radius to pi. Now the input circle includes pi and negative pi, and both have a sine of 0. In the animation, we see them approaching 0. Now let's add some zoom to the animation, so we see what happens on a smaller scale. This is the animation with radius 2 pi, which you may recognize from the start of the video. And this is 3 pi. and 4 pi. Now, of course, if we graph sine, then we should also look at cosine, which has this Maclaurin series. The cosine of 1 half pi is 0, so we'll graph with a radius of 1 half pi. Just like with sine, we see the point approaches zero, but it's only one point, not two. Well, it is actually two points, they're just overlapping. The Maclaurin series for cosine only has even powers, so any number z gives the same output as negative z, which means the shape of the graph is actually two identical shapes stacked on top of each other. The same goes for radius one and a half pi, and 2 and a half pi, and 3 and a half pi.
Let's move on from cosine and look at the exponential function, which also has a Maclaurin series. And the exponential is interesting, because if we take the domain as all complex numbers, the range is all complex numbers except for zero. So when we animate the Maclaurin series, the graph goes around zero at first, but as we add more terms, it pulls back to avoid zero. If we increase the radius, the same thing happens. It just takes longer. Because the exponential function never outputs zero, its inverse, the natural log, is undefined at zero so it doesn't have a Maclaurin series. But there is one for the natural log of 1 minus x, so we can use this if we adjust the input. And the animation for this keeps repeating the same shape. We also get a sort of repetition with 1 over 1 minus x, which has a very simple Maclaurin series. This loops in on itself over and over and over. To wrap things up, let's look at just powers of x. We'll go from x to x squared to x cubed and continue. This one isn't a Maclaurin series, but I think it looks cool. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if there's another function that you'd like to see graphed in this way.